Once again, we welcome you to BIC Online, Bandung International Church. Thanks to our scripture readers and everybody else who plays a part in making this happen. And a reminder, we've got some exciting things happening for the kids after the service, as well as we'll probably have the pastor chat available to you. Look uh, in the um, update group for information on how to do that. The link may have changed. Besides those changes, we are excited to start a new series today. After Easter this year, we explored some spiritual disciplines together, and we talked about the things that we do as followers of Jesus that open our hearts to God. Those included some things like prayer, fasting, Bible reading, study, and some other things. And our topic for this next season is follow Jesus. And our focus is not only how to do, but also what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And we're really looking forward to learning along with you. We love your input, your feedback in the comments and as you talk to us during the week and so on. We're going to look at how we behave because of who we are, what our priorities are, and how we can influence others. Many of us, especially those of us raised with a Western mindset, are focused on doing. Mm. The nice thing about doing is that it can be measured. How much are we doing? How fast are we getting it done? And what's our progress toward being finished? <laughs> oh yeah, wouldn't it be nice to be finished? But others understand much better than we do the benefit of being. Pastor Dave from IS Jakarta, who was our guest at Famous Friday about a week ago, told us a number of years ago about a man who was a professor at Washington State University, which is our home state. He was part Native American, and some of the students at the university who were also Native American would come and just stay in his outer office around where he was working on stuff, or sometimes would join him in his office. And they'd just sit. They wouldn't talk, wouldn't do anything. And when he was asked what they were doing, his answer was, they're not doing anything. They are being. <laughs> well, doing seems easier to measure than being. How do you measure being? That question doesn't have a simple answer. The stories about Jesus in what we call the Gospels or the Good News often include a phrase where Jesus says, follow me. And sometimes Jesus also explains what it means to follow him. So over the next few months, we're going to explore what it means to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus. And you probably know this, but not everybody who calls themselves a Christian is actually a follower of Jesus. In some places, you're considered a Christian simply because you're Western. Here in Indonesia, Indonesians carry something called a KTP, KTP, sorry, which is their identity card. But having Kristen or Christian on an identity card, does that make you a true follower of Jesus? You probably know that's not the way it works. A government label will never remake your heart. How about if you go to church, whether you go regularly or just for Christmas and Easter, does that make you a follower of Jesus? No, even if you sing along and make the right sounds as if you belonged. Or to shift a little bit, what if you were able to spend the night at one of the presidential palaces in Indonesia? Does that make you the president of Indonesia? Obviously not. <laughs> what we're saying is that it's being, not just doing that shows that you're a follower of Jesus. Oh yes, what you do is important because it expresses who you are inside or your being. But it's possible and perhaps even common for people to try to act differently on the outside than who they are in the inside. We call this being a hypocrite. Now, nobody likes a hypocrite, right? But I need to tell you a bit about this word. It started as a term in Greek theater, and it wasn't a bad thing. If you were an actor on a Greek stage, you would pick up a mask, hold it in front of your face, and you became that character. You were hupokrites, literally, an interpreter from underneath the mask or behind the mask. On a stage, in theater, film, that's a good thing. It's a normal thing. 
<laughs> we expect acting when we go to a theater. And the people who are good at it, the people who are good at acting or wearing a mask, they get paid quite well. <laughs> but in real life, we want the people around us to be real, not to be playing a part. What may be okay on the stage is not healthy in real life, in daily life. You and I demand authenticity from those around us. For example, you wouldn't choose a doctor if you knew they didn't really care if you lived or died, or if they were making, you know, if they just put a coat on <laughs> that said doctor so-and-so. No, you want your doctor or your nurse to care about your good life and your health, and that takes a genuine medical skill and interest. You know, I just read a terrible story about a woman who lived with a sick person for more than 20 years. She was considered by everyone to be a trusted caretaker and a friend. Just last week it came out that one of the reasons her roommate was ill was that this woman was injecting her with E. coli and other things to make her sick. The friend was caught when she tried to buy some antibiotic resistant bacteria actually from an FBI agent and she was planning to inject her roommate after surgery, it would probably kill her. Well, That's... she's now on the insurance policy, wasn't she? <laughs> she was on the life insurance policy and there were other things involved. You know, uh -huh. that's not a friend you want. No. Well, once we begin to follow Jesus, he puts us in right relationship with God. That changes us from the inside out. It transforms our desires, our values, and our core beliefs. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So to be means that you have the right, first of all, deep desires. David, man after God's own heart, wrote this, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Maybe that was why David was such a friend of God. And Jesus tells us, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. What is God's will? That everybody who chooses to believe in Jesus should receive eternal life. You can look this up on the screen. The second thing that it means to be is that we have a change in values. You value the same thing God values, such as truth, mercy, justice, and goodness. When Israel thought they could satisfy God by bringing him a few sacrifices, making a payment toward their debt, hmm. Hosea speaks for God and says, I want you to show love, not to offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want burnt offerings. David says the same. You do not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. <sighs> oh, just to be inside the person that loves God and is loved by God. And we can have that. And a third category is belief. We have a beautiful story told in John chapter 4 where Jesus meets a woman at a well and there are many reasons why he shouldn't have a conversation with her. But one of the things he tells her is God is spirit and so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And then Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. What sense does it make to go to somebody who isn't there? And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Our core beliefs have to be the truths that God has made known. It matters what you believe about God, and it matters which God you believe in. Believing in Peter Pan will not save you. <laughs> and by the way, for those of you who don't know about Peter Pan, it's some kind of a little fairy who flies around Grant's wishes. Um, you know... Those deep desires, those values, and those beliefs shape what we do. And the fruit of your life will begin to look like this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Look at the list on the screen. 
aren't those things that you're longing for in your life? Don't you want to be in right standing with God and others? If you're like me, you already know you can't do this on your own. You know, one of our friends always used to say at this point of the talk, so what? <laughs> How does this affect me? Well, maybe you've always wondered what it would mean to follow Jesus. Why does that seem to have significance to bring joy and peace to people? Uh, and maybe you grew up in a Christian family and you've coasted on the relationship that your grandma or your parents have with Jesus. And maybe at some point you said, Jesus, I want to do this. You said, I want to follow Jesus. But in your heart of hearts, though you may have taken the name Christian, and people assume that you're following Jesus, there's been no change in your being. You've resisted the work of Jesus, and you're the same old person that you always were. <laughs> That's so frustrating and discouraging, isn't it? You know, Paul talks about new life that comes to us as followers of Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, he says, The old things have gone. Everything has become new. So this series, which we're introducing today, is about that transformation. What changes? What becomes new? How can you become a new person who then does and experiences life in Christ? Does that put a longing in your heart as it does for mine? I want to be God's oh, woman. <laughs> I want to love Him. I want to love other people, to serve God and serve others with all my heart. So please join us in the next few weeks to find out more. We're going to post some resources in the description in case you want to do some research on your own. Today, if you want to take a first step toward becoming a follower of Jesus, or you want to become serious about following Him, we invite you to pray along with us. God, we thank you that it is your desire to give us life, to give us abundance, to give us joy, peace, all these things. They're not just about doing, but they're about experiencing in our heart what it means to be at peace, to experience love. We thank you that you desire that for us and that you are willing to give it to us if we ask. May I be changed from the inside out. May anyone who's listening who wants this same thing in their life, whether they've known you for a while or whether this is something that's just a new thing for them, may we experience what it means to be transformed by your Spirit to truly be your follower. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you for your invitation. And Jesus, we come to you right now. We say we want to follow you. We don't know exactly what that will all mean, what it will cost us, what it will benefit us. But this morning, we come to you with our sins and our failures, and we lay them down. And we say, Jesus, cover us. Cover us with your blood. Cover us with your sacrifice. And we will follow you. In the name of Jesus, we ask this. Amen. Amen.